clients, profitability, and systems. If we were starting a photography business in 2024, that's what we would need, period. Hey, welcome. I'm Tia, one half of Cameron and Tia. My husband and I are wedding photographers in Minneapolis, Minnesota and photography business coaches. We're here for you with all the business tips. The coaching, hit us up, we can get one-on-one, -on -one, technically two-on-one, -on -one, and everything you need to run a photography business in 2024. Today, I just wanna chat what's needed to make a successful photography business. Let's go ahead and let's dive right in. Number one, you need clients. And this sounds like, duh, Tia, yeah, like obviously who's going to be paying me otherwise. But I think that a lot of people put this on the wayside. They don't focus a lot on this and instead they focus on like putting all of the pieces together of like, oh, okay, well I have systems. We're gonna talk about that in a second. And I am a photographer. I announced it, but no one is coming through the doors. And I don't think it's one of those things where if I build it, everyone is going to come. I think when starting out, you need to go seek out people. And a lot of people don't necessarily have the balls to go do that. They feel really nervous about that and they say, well, I'm a photographer now. I post this on this Facebook page. Why is no one hiring me? Now, here's the thing. I think that it's worth it to get a little ballsy and to go ask all of your friends, all of your family, hey, can I photograph this for you? Hey, I know that you're pregnant right now. Can I do a maternity session for you? Or hey, my neighbor down the street, I know that you haven't done family photos in a while. Or maybe they have. I guess it doesn't really matter. Maybe they did last week. Can I do this family session for you for free? And I think a lot of people neglect shooting for free and the power that that might have. If you want to dive more into that, because I know that that can be a really complex narrative, we have a full video explaining when when we think it is advantageous to shoot for free and when it's probably not. And I understand that that line is going to be different for some people and different for different scenarios and if you have an income coming in or not or where you are in your trajectory. But when you're starting out, I think that there's a lot of value for shooting for free or for very minimal costs. So go check out that video up above. Now let's go back to those balls. I think that it's really worthwhile to put yourself out there. Don't just stand back and be passive and wait for the people to come to you. I think that if I go down the street and I knock on my neighbor's door and I say, hey, can I do a family session for you? Okay, you're probably not knocking on the door, you're probably texting them, whatever. But you say, hey, can I do this for you next week? And like, let's get going. There's no need for you to wait a month or a couple of months to get all of these sessions happening. And you do this session and let's say best case scenario, it goes really well. There's probably a medium case, there's probably a worst case where you learn a lot from it and that's super valuable regardless. But best case, it goes well. They didn't pay you for it, it's free, so that's not really helping you yet, especially for profitability that we're gonna get into in a hot second. But they then have tons of friends, they have tons of family, their kids are also in sports and clubs and activities where they have tons of friends there of all kinds of other people who are looking for family photos. And so while you may not make something off of this one shoot, the potential is that it always ripples from there. And so they have this close circle, they have a far circle, they have a farther circle of people that they know that they are going to spread the word about you. And from there, let's say you book one family that is from your initial neighbor that they are in soccer with their kids that family then has a circle, right? And they it has this huge ripple effect where you're starting all of these different circles and all of these people have ripples, ripples, ripples from there. And so that can be super, super game changing. Whereas you might initially say, ah, this doesn't really feel worth it to get these balls and go knock on all my neighbor's doors figuratively. Um, but I think that there's a lot of worth in all of these circles that you then tap into. And you then have the possibility of reaching from those initial five people down your street. So the biggest thing I want to say here is here you are 2024 starting this photography business. Don't sit back and wait for the clients to come to you. Go out there and get them. And so to start, think about all the circles that you're a part of book club or your friends or your family, your college contacts, your high school friends, just your high school contacts that you went to high school with. You know, you might be reaching back really far, but those are hundreds of people that you at one point had contact with and could start that contact again. And then think of your gym. Think about the coffee shop that you go to regularly. There are a lot of circles that you're part of, whether you show up regularly or whether you have just made contact once, but all of those people are potential first clients. And again, we know that those first clients bring their own pawns that you can make ripple effects into that have huge lasting effects. So go get those clients. Number two, profitability. So now this free strategy, we don't recommend it forever. 
We recommend it once you have gotten your toes dipped in a couple different ponds and you have some quality leads. At some point, and hopefully really rapidly, because you just went out there and you knocked on all those doors, you are then able to set up a sustainable profit strategy that is going to be something that can make some serious money for you. Now again, we know that this is personal. This could be a side hustle that you wanna pursue. This could be, hey, I wanna replace my corporate income as soon as possible so that I can get out of this job I don't love and I can work from home. Or this might be, hey, I am a full-time parent. I wanna make some extra income for our household. I wanna help contribute to birthday gifts or to our family trips, whatever that may be. So there are gonna be different goals within this spectrum. What we recommend is doing a CODB, which is the cost of doing business. So you're going to do some research and you're going to figure out what the cost of doing business is. So that's gonna include different tools. So for example, having subscriptions to something like HoneyBook, which is a client management system which we're gonna talk a little bit more in a hot second about systems, or it's going to include um, one-time costs, like per, for example, buying templates from a photographer, which again, we'll talk about in a hot second. Those type of things, you're going to list them all out, and then you're going to figure out what your goal income is. And then you can work backwards to see where those merge, to see, hey, if I subtract out the cost of doing business, how can I make this X amount that I wanna make every year or break it down every month? And that could be that right now, you are just working up to that goal, but it's also going to allow you to figure out, I need to book X amount of sessions every single month or every single week in order to hit that goal at the end of the year. So someone who's trying to replace their corporate income, this is gonna be really revealing of like, hey, if I only charge this much for this session, I need to book so many sessions and that seems near impossible. Let me raise my pricing slightly and let's see if I can book at that pricing so that I don't have to book as many sessions. Let me know if that all makes sense. Because related, again, with that CODB is systems. And that is number three. I want you to really evaluate what systems are needed. And here's what you do. So you start doing these sessions, right, with all of your neighbors, and you do a whole lot of everything, which we encourage. Do some family sessions, do some maternity. If you feel equipped, do some newborns, do some older families, you know, with teenagers or with grown children that are out of the home. Do some extended family sessions, do some seniors, maybe do some weddings, maybe your second shooting or your assisting. Start dipping your toes in all of the different sessions that you can explore because that is just going to expedite figuring out what you really love, what you are not a fan of, what maybe you don't feel as confident in or you don't feel like you have the skill set or the personality to do. It's gonna really quickly reveal what are your strengths and what type of sessions you want to explore. Now, we're not saying that you need to be locked into anything. You can do families for a while and then maybe you want to advance to some weddings and that's totally fine. But throughout this process, you're going to start revealing, hey, I really do like families and I really like a lot of young families. You know, I love doing from one year olds up to 10 year olds. That's really fun for me, really engaging. I feel like it matches my personality, my general demeanor, my skill set. That's gonna be a really good fit. And what you're gonna do is you're going to map out from start to finish everything that the families need on this client journey. So it's going to be from when they find you or how you're being discovered, so that's your marketing, and maybe that's two to three different types of marketing buckets. So that could be, for example, like Instagram. That could be posting at local coffee shops on their bulletin boards, and that could be sponsoring an ad in the local high school's football program, right? So there are football programs that they have that they have at every single football game. A lot of young families attend their local football games, and so they're gonna be, you're gonna sponsor an ad that's $250 for the season in which they see in every single program. So there's just three sample marketing kind of buckets. So that's the start of the client journey. They find you through that football ad or at the local coffee shop or on Instagram. The client journey lasts all the way from photo delivery through nurturing them to come back for another family session. So one of the great things about families is that they are repeat clients. The goal is that you maybe see them every single year, at least every other year, especially when they're young families. A lot of families will do that that often. Sometimes it's maybe even like a milestone package where families purchase it when they have a newborn or maybe when, they have, when they're about to have a baby so that you see them maybe for four sessions in a two year period. That's personally what our milestone sessions look like. So they purchase four sessions at a slight discount because we want to get them repeat. And so we see them really often, maybe for a maternity session, for a newborn, for a one year session and for a two year session. That's really awesome. So that is going to be the client journey all the way from marketing through inquiry, how you respond to them with a pricing guide, 
then through booking. How do they book? What system do they go to? What's the email template that you send them so that they can learn, here's how I book? Through nurturing them to get ready for their sessions. That could be sending them a guide. That could be sending them meeting directions to get to the location. It could be setting them expectations and reminders about arriving early, about picking out socks that match, about covering undergarments. Then all the way through sending a preview, sending the final gallery delivery, and then nurturing them again to book their next family session. That is a full timeline and it could happen at different time ranges. You know, there's different gaps between, okay, I delivered a session. In six months, I'm going to reach back out to them to nurture them for a future family session. Or maybe they just get put on an email list where they get reminders every three months, you know, every quarter of like, hey, we're opening up booking for the following year. That is a client journey and there's a lot of nuances in there from guides to email templates to how they're receiving these emails, how they're receiving reminders via text or via email. There are a lot of choices to be made and so we recommend laying out that full journey. If you're a visual person, put that on a bunch of post-its, write notes on those post-its and see where you have holes. Where do you need to create an email template? Where do you need to create a guide and how are you going to create those resources? Now. The great thing in this day and age in 2024 is there are tons of photographers that have these resources done for you. If you are looking for these resources, we have them in our shop. We have wedding templates where we have literally 25 email templates. That's how much is in our client journey. Lots of variations of like, hey, we're not available. Hey, we are available. Let's recommend these people though, like all those things. Um, where you can get the templates, you can then personalize them for your brand voice, for your preferences, for your timing preferences, and then you're able to use those. We also have wedding guide templates, and you're gonna be able to find that from different photographers all over the board, for families, for maternity, for newborn. So check those out. I'm gonna link down below our shop so that you can check them out. But if you need to find a certain type of template and you don't want to start from scratch, don't start from scratch. It's 2024. People have already done this work for you. Tried and true work through 10 years where they've tested and tried multiple email templates. Don't start from scratch. But if you want to try to find something like, hey, I really want a newborn template for this. Where would I look? Comment down below and we'll help research that for you so that you don't have to start from scratch. So I hope you're feeling really excited. This year is the year that you get your photography business off the ground. And again, you just need clients, profitability, and systems. And we are ready to help you do that. So if you have any questions, drop them down below. If you liked this video, we're going to have tons more content like this throughout the year. So be sure to hit subscribe. Uh, this is the like, but be sure to hit subscribe. Like this video if you are feeling it. If you subscribe, you're going to get videos every Thursday where we are breaking down all sorts of strategies like this. And until next time, bye.